What's going on YouTube? So today's video is about explaining the differences between sessions and cookies. And the reason why I want to talk about this topic is to clarify some common issues that I've seen with developers when it comes to implementing sessions and cookies. The purposes of sessions and cookies is to preserve some kind of short-term data among multiple requests. A lot of times this could be tracking cookies or user tokens. Sessions is the short-term data that is stored on a server, and typically there is a session cookie that the user browser will have so that the server is able to associate the session data to the correct users. Cookies are short-term data that is stored on the user's browser, and typically each cookie will have an expiration time. So when we are dealing with the web application that is running on one server, we are sure that we will have the correct session data for each user. However, when a web application is running on multiple servers, we are not sure if the session data will be correct because the session data on server A will not be the same as the session data on server B. So there are two different things that can be done to solve this issue. One, we can design the web application to track the user so that no matter which web server that they end up on, they will always have access to their session data. Or two, we can design the web application to not use session data but to rely on browser cookies and store critical or sensitive data in the database. So let us take a deeper dive into solution number one. For this solution, we would need to either centralize the session or we need to make sure that the user request is only handled by the same web server. Usually this solution is to use a caching service like Memcache or Redis to handle storing of session data since you can have one caching server for multiple web servers. In this setup, no matter which web server handles the user session, the data will be stored on one centralized location. Or, another way we can implement this solution is to have a load balancer assign sticky session cookies to the user. In this setup, the load balancer will look at the user's cookie to see which web server that they were assigned to and then forward the request to that web server. One of the drawbacks of implementing solution number one is that when the application receives enough concurrent requests, the session caching servers can get full and start evicting session data. Or, it is also possible that when using sticky sessions, one server can have too many concurrent users and end up crashing. Typically, a way to mitigate this issue involves monitoring the traffic and adding more servers as needed. A lot of times, a load balancer will see that one server is overloaded and then start forcefully reassigning users to other servers to help prevent any of the servers from crashing. So let us take a deeper dive into solution number two. For this solution, we will have to design the web application to not use session data, but rely on browser cookies in the database. Solution two will look a lot like solution number one. However, the difference is how the application looks at the user's data. It would need to determine how critical and sensitive the data is in order to decide where the data should be stored. Critical and or sensitive data would be stored in the database, while non-critical and or sensitive data would be stored in the browser cookie. One of the many drawbacks with solution number two is making sure that the correct user has access to only their data in the database meaning that if an application allows anonymous user, then it may be a good idea not to store any critical and or sensitive data in the database unless there is some kind of authentication system that can be used to verify the user's identity. Another potential drawback is kind of the same issue from solution number one, is the number of requests. If there is enough concurrent connections to the database, it can cause the database to crash. However, a way to prevent this issue is to have multiple databases. Neither solution is better than the other because both solutions are just different faces of the same coin. Even I use both solutions when designing some web application that I know will have a large flow of traffic. That is because each solution has some edge that the other does not have, but they work best when the application uses both solutions. It is important to understand how the user will interact with the application because from there, we can design the most optimal version of the application. However, it is important to see how malicious users may try to find security holes and figure out ways to prevent those vulnerabilities from existence in the first place. Well, that concludes this video. 
If you have any comment, questions, complaints, concerns, please leave them down below. Until then, I'll see you guys later. Peace. Thank you.